I can't keep up, I can't keep up. Are you tired? Effective note-taking techniques? You know the kind. The ideas behind them seem good, but they're not exactly techniques you would ever actually use. And every time you try some new note-taking technique, no matter what, all of them seem to lead to one place. You writing down long strings of notes verbatim. It's usually boring, and stand by for truth pill, boring note-taking rarely works. It gets worse. These boring note-taking styles mean that you're always struggling to keep up. You often wind up missing huge sections of the lecture and struggle to reconstruct what was said from the notes. And if you're anything like me, you don't want to struggle with your memory. So if you're tired of struggling with your memory after taking notes, then you're in the right place. I'm going to give you some counterintuitive note-taking techniques to try. Get out a notebook and take notes, because we're getting started right now. Hi there, this is Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com. You know, I went to university from 1996 all the way to 2009. During those years, I took a lot of notes. And since I managed to get through to the PhD with a second MA on the way, I'm someone with a very noisy mind who has learned to keep focused and not be scatterbrained, and all without a ton of hard work. That's what we help people with here. So if you're new and want to take notes better and remember more, hit thumbs up, get subscribed, and enable notifications so you don't miss a thing. And please understand, there is a brutal truth about note-taking techniques. You can watch all the videos on note-taking in the world, but it's never the note-taking techniques that should take the blame when you fail to remember information. There are other factors at play and they all meet in one central place. You. So, if you're taking lecture notes verbatim, that's the first thing that should change. A lot of people tell me they wish it was easier. Wishing and hoping and praying is not a strategy. Instead, you need to make yourself better. Get committed to that goal and develop a strategy based on a vision you create for yourself. For today's lesson, your goal should be to pause this video and get something to take notes with. I want you to observe yourself doing it and then, using the tips I'm about to share, start the process of exploring new and different approaches. You got something to write with? I'm trusting you here, and the Magnetic Memory Method community is all about creating smarter learners. That means serious, mature, and ready to embrace reality. The reality is that I never learned a thing nearly as fast or as well when I didn't follow the instructions. And I still take courses myself, and when the teacher says, stop the recording and take notes, I do it. That's how I got here, and if you're a smarter student, you'll embrace the reality that your brain learns faster and more thoroughly when you meet a teacher halfway. And then, write these things down. They are my favorite and most magnetic note-taking techniques. Now, I know you're here for note-taking techniques, and you're going to get them, but I want to start with the ideal situation. I often prefer not to take notes at all if I can avoid it. At least not the first time around. How is avoiding note-taking possible? How is it even remotely responsible, especially when you're someone dumping thousands of dollars into books and courses? Easy. Just read using the tips I shared in our How to Memorize a Textbook video. Or, at a lecture, press record. Many speakers will allow you to record their talks. And when you can record, you can simply release yourself to absorb the information without distracting yourself with the need to capture any of it. If you know how to make and use an impromptu memory palace, you can lightly encode if you wish. But I often don't even do that. I simply focus on the message and allow my mind to connect the dots. We talked a lot about how you can learn to do that in our reading comprehension video as well. And if you don't know how to create a memory palace, get the free memory kit that has already served thousands of people at MagneticMemoryMethod.com. Now, I know this is counterintuitive, but it's well worth practicing. I suggest that you go to a few public lectures where you don't need to remember anything, and then use the room as a memory palace as you listen. Later, you can try it when the stakes are high. Then, really great focus, concentration, and memory powers will start to develop. You see, when you remove the consequences of forgetting and then think back to the lecture and allow yourself to remember, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by how much comes back. It's almost as if you've said to your memory, Go ahead and forget everything, it will be fine. Of course, you're not actually saying that, and this reverse psychology could backfire. But by releasing the outcome, 
you'll likely focus more on the proceedings and remember more by default. Recordings are powerful assets. You can listen to them anytime you want in the future, as many times as you want. They can also serve as the basis for the five sensory memory exercises I shared with you before. These will improve your memory tremendously. And by working with a recording, you can take notes at your leisure with one powerful asset. You're encountering the information for the second time, not the first. You've already got the broad overview and you've primed your memory with reverse psychology. And you're also in a position to listen more strategically. And you'll get so much more out of it the second time with a greater lens of focus and concentration for the granular details because you've got the big picture in your mind. Plus, when you take notes from the recording, you're able to do it in a preferred environment, free from the distractions of other people in the room. You're even free from the visual distractions created by the speakers themselves. Although I do like to attend lectures and take no notes at all, I still always have a notebook, and often I do take notes. But in that notebook, I like to doodle. I've doodled in lecture halls around the world. And it's also a great activity while watching or listening to recorded lectures, podcasts, magnetic memory method, long form, live stream replays, etc. The longer the lecture and the more attention they require, the more I find doodling beneficial. Why? Because long content can make me fidgety. No matter how enthralling it is, I like to be moving. The best part? Drawing doesn't exclude note taking. Rather, it shapes and informs it. As I draw, I write down keywords and notes that seem interesting to me and useful for further exploration. In a way, doodling while paying attention to information is like mind mapping, but without creating a deliberate mind map. It helps me focus on the information as it flows in real time without being distracted by writing down things said seconds or minutes ago while new information is accumulating. There are also different kinds of drawing that are useful. I would divide these between doodling abstract shapes and forms and drawing characters. For many years, I drew abstractions almost entirely. Then I started drawing figures. Dr. Fuse Less is one figure in particular who came up in my notebooks again and again. In either case, I found that by drawing the same things repetitively while focusing on lectures helped me focus even more on the material. It's being creative and giving the body something to do without creating anything from scratch. This lowers the cognitive drain of the doodling and maximizes how it can focus your attention like a laser on what you're learning. After that, the keywords you write down on the page are triggers or catalysts for remembering what was discussed. For example, I used one simple drawing to remember a host of facts about Fritz Lang's metropolis by paying close attention and doodling during a lecture. Listening back later, I decoded what I was thinking by remembering the doodle and then used more traditional mnemonics to place the rest of the specifics I needed for my field exams into long-term memory. The process is golden for learning and remembering more and a lot more fun too. Sometimes I like to take massive amounts of notes. To do this, I just go hog wild, doodling and taking notes at the same time. There is no particular strategy. It's just to write down as much as I can in a linear fashion. Is this effective? Yes and no. But in order to make sure that it is as effective as possible, I tend to type these notes later into a document or a summary. This strategy is related to the big five, which in memory science is called the levels of processing effect first identified by Craik and Lockhart in 1972. I've talked about the power of writing summaries for better memory many times, and that's because it is one of the most effective things you can do in addition to verbally expressing what you've taken notes about in conversation. But writing down as much as you possibly can during a lecture is essentially succumbing to scarcity. We often act out of the fear that we're going to miss something that will be important later. We need to be really careful about this fear. Why? Because chances are fear will cause you to write down a bunch of useless information and actually miss the most important points. Plus, although there are strategies for knowing what will appear on an exam, such as looking at past test examples and discussing it with your teacher, you can never ultimately know what's coming. But you can closely analyze your textbooks and understand the rule of redundancy. This rule tells us that 80% of any text is going to be what is sometimes called filler words. Some people even call it fluff. 
It's wrong to be negative about this seemingly empty content. The truth is, is that our brains need it. We need it for context, we need it for nuance. We need it for giving room to sort, sift, and screen the heavy concepts. There's no such thing as raw data or pure knowledge in the same way as there is no such thing as a crop of tomatoes without a field of soil. One needs the other. And when you learn to read and take notes strategically and practice different strategies for doing so, you'll learn how to till the surrounding soil, not only so you find all the tomatoes of knowledge, but respect how the seemingly insignificant surrounding information brings them into existence. Now, I know this is a bit conceptual, so for further study, I suggest you look up content on the Pareto Principle and something called Zipf's Law. It'll help you rethink how you approach volumes of text. And this understanding, when percolated and practiced thoroughly, will help remove your time scarcity and that worrying fear that you're missing out. You won't be. You'll see that what used to seem like long introductions or boring passages are actually providing the field, the foundation and basis for you to connect and reflect. Speaking of connection and reflection, here's one of my biggest tips I want you to reflect on. Now that you have some more approaches in your note-taking arsenal, you can start practicing them. But I find that one of the most important aspects of note-taking is simply being strategic about what you write down. For example, I've had a lot of students who write down all the book titles I mentioned, and some of them go and read those books, or at least 20% of them, which is what the Pair 2 principle essentially guarantees. To break the Pair 2 principle, or 80-20 rule, I personally use speed of implementation. This law suggests that for every minute you don't follow up on a suggestion, you are exponentially less likely to do so as time goes on. So remember, when I asked you to take notes at the beginning, if you didn't implement that suggestion right away, you need to stop and think about your commitment to being a smarter student. Because if you, like me, want to get ahead in life, the reality is, is you've got to do more and be more than others. You can sit in a lecture and remember more than anyone else without taking a single note. You can doodle and use diffuse thinking to create connections on autopilot with a backup strategy for writing summaries later. And you can milk a whole lot more out of lectures by simply reading an article written by the speaker and then reading 20% of the books and articles mentioned in the bibliography. I've done this many times and feel confident that I gained as a result and never lost. In that large field of possible reading, the 20% is where the tomatoes will be found. We can't have it all. And this video can't cover everything. But in How to Memorize a Textbook, you'll learn more about applying this 80-20 distribution principle with yet another note-taking technique that has saved my skin, helped me write dozens of essays, and is still essential for my book writing process today. Whatever you do, I suggest that you approach note-taking as an art and a science. Make sure that you experiment with multiple styles and track your results. Journal about it. Talk with others about your progress. Post here or on the Magnetic Memory Method forum. This will help the levels of processing effect wake up your brain and speed up your rate of learning as it increases the amount of information you remember. And as you pay attention to what's happening more consciously, you'll learn more about what works for you and lean towards your preferences with greater understanding. But you've got to use speed of implementation. And I hope you wrote that one down and will remember it. Time is ticking and you've got another video on how to memorize a textbook you need to be taking notes from. Above all, magnetic friends, Find ways to remove all stress. So many learners bring so much worry that they forget to play. Learning really is a game. It's one you can win too, provided you put your memory and strategy first. Good morning, Magnetic Familia. So it's uh, quarter two, eight. I think class doesn't start until uh, nine o'clock. I usually get here around seven, seven fifteen. I just wanted to show you a tool that I use to practice my major. Uh, this is a hundred digit dice. I spin it and wherever it lands, I just go over the major. And if it lands on a two digit number in the subject or era that I am currently learning. So if it lands, let's say, in, I don't know, 88, I would go over Cape of Good Hope in 1488. Something just to get me going. I'm confident today's note-taking techniques, if you give them a try in combination with the bigger picture and the robust tools of a magnetic memory palace network, you will be very happily forced to remember more without so much as breaking a sweat. 
Thanks as always for the view. Hit that thumbs up and get subscribed if you haven't already. And until next time, keep yourself magnetic. Oh, and as a final weird tip, I usually use pencil for note taking and multiple colors for mind mapping. The pencil thing just feels more organic and sharpening is a diffuse thinking activity. It's like taking the pressure off of study to percolate ideas for a bit, and it really helps. And as for multiple colors in mind mapping, I've got a whole playlist that explains the wonderful logic behind that for learning faster and remembering more. Please don't miss it.